Hello everyone, Dan here for the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I want to talk a little bit about the release of Backslash, Back to School. The trade paperback is finally out. Really cool. I hope you can see it very well. I have the, there we go. We got the focus in. Uh, the camera's got the autofocus. So yeah, look at that. Beautiful. I love the cover. How, you know, you see almost like a, like a school, you know, like a, a notebook um, and the doodles. Zoe, Zoe Thurger is a lovely, fantastic uh, creator. So, and then you get to see this really cool cosplay that she did with Cassie. Uh, so yeah, this is really fun stuff. Uh, if the camera would uh, stop auto-focusing, there we go. Uh, so yeah, this is really cool. So I want to talk a little bit about the trade. And then I also have a compilation of all the reviews for the first, for the four issues that are in here, uh, which you can watch uh, the rest of the video. So as I mentioned, uh, this is a story and art by Zoe Thurgood with art uh, with colors by Sarah Mitresh and Zoe. Uh, flats by CH2 uh, X Ludwig X, um, and of course Hackslash created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli. Um, and you know, I've made my my feelings about this series very well known on the internet, but I love the series. I've never experienced Hackslash. Um, and I think this was a great introduction to uh, to this property. Uh, I don't know that I'll go back and check out some more stuff because it seems like if this is already pretty gnarly. I can only imagine uh, what Tim Silly uh, and Stefano Caselli could have brought. But uh, you also have in the back uh, the cover gallery. So that's really cool. So you get to see a lot of the variant covers that were for the four issues. Uh, the main covers were done by Zoe. Uh, so here you get to see some of those other covers. You know, uh, there's some interesting stuff in the back. Uh, so, yeah. And then, like I said, I love the, the back of the book. Uh, it's really fun. If this would focus, there we go. I love the back of the book. I think it's really cool that a creator gets to cosplay as one of the characters. Um, so, yeah, it's really cool. So make sure to pick this up from your, um, from your comic book shop, from your bookstore, from your library. Uh, it also has, I won't give it away, but it does have a timeline of like, uh, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, I don't, it has a little bit of a timeline. I'm going to cover that up because it's kind of a spoiler, but it has a timeline of the hack slash series. So if you want to get deep in there, you can. Uh, and then there are, of course, uh, you know, more recommendations and stuff. So very, very good trade. This is only $12.99. Like that's a really good price for, for a four issue trade. Uh, with this level of detail, uh, I love it. So hopefully one day I can get it signed by Zoe Thurgood, uh, maybe even by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli. Uh, but yeah, very exciting stuff. Uh, and now we can continue. You can listen or watch my reviews for issues one through four of Hack Slash. Uh, so if you picked up the trade, let me know what you thought about it. And please enjoy my review. <laughs> For this week's advanced review, as you guys know, we've been doing some advanced reviews. Uh, it's a book that I'm pretty excited for just because of the creative team behind it. Uh, we're going to be talking about Hackslash, Back to School, number one. There's a new book from Image Comics coming out uh, next week. So as you can see this is by, with story and art by Zoe Thurgood. Uh, the original Hackslash was created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli. Now, before we get into this, have any of you guys read Hackslash stuff before? Nope. No, no, no one. Interesting, because this—I mean, it seems like a pretty. I feel like there's a Hackslash book at least every other year or something over at Image, uh, like from the from since whenever I can remember. Uh, so, but yeah, it's interesting that we don't. So, before we get into this book. I wanted to ask, did you guys feel like this book was accessible enough without having any hack slash uh, knowledge? Uh, oh, I'll yeah. start to you first. Yeah, I had never read any hack slash. And so uh, just going into it, I, I wasn't sure of the character. But the this issue pretty much kind of sets everything up for you. So it lays out who the character is, kind of what she does. And then she stumbles upon somebody who says, yes, we have a school for people like you. And then you get to meet the other schoolmates. So it's 
very accessible. It's, it, I mean, it's like perfect if you've never read anything before, because I kind of learned who the character is, learned who she's going to school with, and now kind of uh, where the story is going to go uh, right. in the second issue. Yeah. Jeff, did, did you feel it was accessible? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've seen like hack slash on the, on those comic shelves before. So I knew it was like girl, big guy. I, I thought that they were like serial killers or whatever. I, I didn't know what the premise was really. I just knew bloody comic girl, big guy. Uh, so you kind of get that right away. Uh, in this, it is, it does feel very Buffy meets, I don't know, uh, you know, that she goes to the school, so it was like it kind of reminded me of that. What's that Zack Snyder movie? The uh, oh. Uh, oh, Sucker Punch, that? Sucker Punch, Sucker Punch. Yeah, yeah. it's sort of uh, like a little bit of like that kind of a little bit of Umbrella Academy kind of. Yeah, thought. yeah. I mean, X Men too, right? Obviously, there's a school yeah, a little X Men. So. Yeah, uh, cool. a little bit like that. It was yeah, it was super accessible. It was it was it was good. I, I oh. really enjoy Zoe Thurgood's work, so uh, yeah. like her artwork and stuff. So. Well, let me give you guys a quick synopsis of the book. In this, uh, it's, it's going to be a miniseries. In this, the returns it returns with an untold tale uh, and critically acclaimed cartoonist Zoe Thurgood at the bloody helm. Slasher hunter Cassie Hack is only just getting used to her man monster partner Vlad. Uh, so there's the there's the girl, the big, big guy trope that uh, we were talking about. Uh, when she is drawn into a new case involving a murderous bunny mascot dead kids, and an entire squad of maladjusted teenage serial killer hunters. A completely new chapter in the beloved long-running series that's perfect for new readers and old fans alike, just in time for Halloween. So, I mean, this was definitely by design, right, that they wanted mm -hmm. to bring in a new audience and make it accessible. Uh, of course, they're you're using a creator like Zoe, who's like kind of blowing up right now. She has a lot of really good work and and it's just kind of, a, it's a very different thing uh, from some of the other work I've read. Uh, I guess because it is adapting something that already kind of exists. Uh, there's a lot of gore. <laughs> Not, In a horror book? Yeah, but it, it, it's like... It is gory, but it's not. I don't know. Like it's still kind of fun to look at in a weird way. It's Does fun to sense? look at. Is it? I will. I will say there is also like a bit of in in my mind. Like I was talking before, when I think of uh, right. Axe Slash, I think of uh, like I think of like those Catholic schoolgirl outfits. I think it's like a in my head. It's always been a comic for like teenage boys mm. because it is it's. Because it does seem very violent, and then there's like girls in mini skirts and you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I just on the cover, it's never really, I've never, it's never appealed to me. So I do think it's an interesting thing that they've chosen Zoe Thorogood, who does not, who maybe appeals to a different audience to say, look at this stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe they are trying to bring in just a different. Uh, maybe Zoe's got range. Maybe Zoe can write books yeah. for teenage boys too. Yeah, so, yeah. Let me pull up some preview art. Uh, because this, these are the opening pages, and I won't go too deep into it. But yeah. as you can see, <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the pacing of this, like just kind of slowly zooming out for these first few panels. Mm -hmm. And then the big reveal on the next page of like, oh, shit, things went down, right? Yeah. Um, I, I like the news narration of like, this is kind of how we're going to tell you what's going on. And then things escalate pretty quickly, I think, after this. We get a little bit of like who is Cass, who's Vlad, like what what's their relationship like. Uh, I like the narration boxes that are like notes from a diary that feels very personal to the to the character, and I like the character designs. I just I really like the layout of the book. It's fun because we've always been sharing on social media like some of the behind the scenes process for this stuff. Uh, but and the next page after this, if you guys remember that the ones that have read it. Is insane. I I thought about putting in in the slideshow. I decided against it because I think it may spoil something. But also, it's a pretty graphic. Like, it's probably one of the most graphic pages in the issue. Um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I I think the book overall is is very straightforward. A lot of fun, and I, I'm interested because it's only a mini series, so it's not a big commitment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just kind of want to know more about these insane characters that are introduced later on. I really hope that turns on a like a page flip, like that. You yeah. Flip the page and then it's oh like, yeah. 
that's a that's an art that doesn't get talked about much of like these page reveals especially because i read a lot digitally since we get the previews uh digitally but like yeah i guess that's something to check out for when we when i get the issue um do you guys have anything more to say about the book without going too deep into any spoilers I, I just remember my favorite line from it was uh, when they were introducing the characters. They had the goth girl running away, and she and she says, "Oh, that's our resident goth girl. Your eyeliner's making her. You, you, you have so much eyeliner, you're making her uncomfortable." <laughs> um, I think the pug is also pretty fun. Um, oh, the pug is great. Is yeah. it the same? Is it the same characters every book, or is it a different girl, big guy every book? Do you know? I think. I'm not sure about that. I think this this says it's a lost chapter, so I'm thinking we do follow maybe Cass in the in the main series. Maybe that's who we end up following. This feels like almost like year zero for her, maybe yeah. if that's what it is. Mm. Uh, but that's a good question. Baby I don't know. Slash. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I know there's a lot of. For some reason, I thought Hackslash was like a technological hacking type of like book, but. But I've never kind of put it together. So really cool stuff. I enjoyed it. I'm glad we got to read it a little bit early because I had been waiting for it. Um, and here's some of the variant covers. So if you have read this, let us know what you thought about it down in the comments. But so pretty cool. Remember the question. From the next issue podcast, on today's video, I'll be doing a review for Hack Slash Back to School number two. Let's take a look at the creative team behind this book. Uh, this book has a story and art by Zoe Thorgood with color assist by Sarah Mithrish. Uh, apologies if I mispronounce that. Flats by X Ludwig X. Um, and of course, Hackslash was created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli. Uh, and we'll see some of those covers at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in this issue, Cassie Hack has gone back to school. Slasher hunting school. Uh, we also meet Darla, an ex-Scream Queen dedicated to turning young girls into killer killing machines by way of the mysterious agency. And she's just in time as a host of an internet slasher's attack. Uh, I My favorite thing about this book so far, it is that even though I know zero to very, very little about the hack slash world, uh, this book does enough to fill in all those gaps. Like there's not, there's not a place where I ever feel lost uh, because all the characters, and there's a lot of character work in this book, which I also really appreciate. I think Zoe Thorgood is doing such a bang up job of just like giving all these characters such distinct voices. Uh, there's a lot of very fun, quippy dialogue, uh, but then all that stuff is kind of intermingled with, Oh yeah, this book is gory and it's uh, full of really cool and intense shit. So like, you're definitely gonna go for a ride. So it's, I don't know, it's such a fun way to strike this balance. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the art, which is also pretty cool. It's like I just really, I'm really enjoying it. But let's take a look at some of the preview art here, and these are the first opening pages, and I just kind of love the contrast of like, you know, we have this uh, movie star who's getting ready for a shoot. Things are happening. Of course, everything goes awry uh, as the uh, the movie massacre uh, happens on set. Uh, and kind of we get a little bit more of a backstory uh, on Darla and her like her origins and who she is and how she became who she is. Uh, but I just really like how the, the art style kind of changes, right? You see here uh, how much detail there is to every aspect of how Darla's put together uh, and now they're really cool. Uh, and of course, a little fan service. I think fan service is a big part of this, uh, this series. So we also get that. Uh, but then just the gore aspect of it as it changes in this third page, really, really enjoy that stuff. Uh, and there's so much more uh, as we go to these next few pages. Um, we get a lot of, this is where I was saying we get a lot of cool dialogue, I think from these characters uh, they all, I, I just, I'm a big fan of the school aesthetic as far as like setting your story in a school, uh, you know, from either whether it's an X-Men story or something like this. I just love being in, in the school or an institute where uh, characters have to, are kind of forced to interact uh, and build relationships. Uh, and then just 
the whole mixed media almost feeling of this where is oh it just changes complete completely changes styles and this is just a small taste of this uh it, it happens more and more as the the issue goes uh forward but yeah I, of course i think zoe has a very distinct style but she's able to push the boundary into like other things i love that they're just kind of watching this anime music video which i don't know these two <laughs> these two kind of live in my head now uh such cool and then you know cassie checking in on vlad like still there's still a lot of very just subtle character development there uh and as the as the issue continues it gets even more and more um uh, especially when we go into like the whole internet aspect of it all it gets it gets bonkers um but yeah the the characters are a lot of fun the book looks beautiful and it's gory and it's weird and it's just super cool like yeah, and like I mentioned before, you don't need a lot of knowledge, if any, uh, to the hack slash series to kind of really get onto this. Uh, so yeah, this is it's just fun. This book is just fun uh, and entertaining. So really, really enjoyed this uh, second issue. I believe this is also a mini series, so I like that we're just kind of going to get a, a really nice, complete, succinct story. Uh, so. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Hack Slash Back to School number three. This is a new book from Image Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team. So we have story and art by Zoe Thorgood with color assist by Sarah Matriash. Uh, Hack Slash, of course, originally created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli with the main cover by Zoe Thorgood and cover B by Luana Vecchio. So Pretty big fan of both of these artists, actually. So I might end up picking up both of uh, of these um, these these covers. So in this issue, Cassie and the agency discover a dangerous slasher responsible for making kids murder their own families after spending too long online. Cassie assumes it's brainwashing, but which she must be immune to, right? Only stupid people get brainwashed. Uh, let me tell you something. This adventure got out of control very very quickly uh, you know i'm used to i'm used to seeing and expecting a lot of really interesting shenanigans from the crew here uh but boy things escalated quickly probably one of the gnarliest issues with some of the most uh intense art that i've seen uh from thurgood in a little while uh, and and you know i think she sometimes shares a lot of this stuff online previews and, and you know as she's working on stuff but man once you see everything in context once you see everything come together with the colors and the dialogue and everything that it really really adds to the story just that it puts it on a different level uh like the art is it's already magnificent but one of the other things that i really enjoy is that this book is pretty funny and goofy as hell uh which i I have never read the original hack slash, so I don't know if that was a part of the the you know a part of this franchise. Uh, but if it is, I need to go check it out because man, this book is goofy. The characters in it are so silly sometimes, uh, and then you know, and they just they feel very very much like characters that uh, of course know they have to do they have to do this work that they're doing. Uh, but they're going to have a good time doing it if they can. So uh, let's talk about the art for a second here. Let's take a look at some preview. And as I mentioned here, you know, things, the tone of the book kind of is all over the place and in the best of ways. Uh, we see the little kids online, you know, like this little kid is in a trance. Uh, and then, you know, we see the, the girls hanging out, uh, taking some downtime in between missions. And boy, things get really weird and <laughs> pretty gross really fast uh we also see cassie as you know her character's been developing ever since um since we met her at the beginning of this book and i think she's been acclimating herself to the academy and to the people around her so it's really interesting how she's kind of playing all that out uh and of course i love the references here i mean i am a big anime fan i am a big fan of naruto and just having one of the characters be wearing a headband uh and yelling out baka like come on this is like fan service 101 and it's the best ways of fan service i think uh so yeah this book was quite enjoyable i really really dug it i can't wait to see 
what happens in what I believe is the last issue next next time around. Um, I hope that this is not the end of the series. I think there's a lot more stories to tell here. Um, and I think, and hopefully, Zoe Thurgood will definitely keep writing more stuff like this. So, yeah, really, really enjoy this. So Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Hack Slash Back to School number four. This is a new book and the finale uh, from this series uh, by Image Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team here. We have Story and Art by Zoe Thurgood with Color Assist by Sarah Mitresh. Uh, I never learned how to say that name. I apologize. Uh, of course, Hack Slash created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli. We have the main cover by Zoe Thurgood. Uh, boy, oh boy. What can I say about this book other than it is such an epic finale? Uh, let me read the synopsis and then we'll get into this. Uh, the end of the beginning, Cassie and Vlad's first case draws to a brutal end as the school for slasher killers faces a slasher killer killer. And Cassie faces the question, who's too broken fix? Now, does that make sense out of context? I don't think so. But once you read this book, you're going to be like, oh, okay. Makes perfect sense. What a what a really fun book that is also one of the most fucked up things I've ever read. Um, not not being a fan uh, or even... I, like, I knew about Hack Slash prior, but I've never read it. I've never really dove into it. Uh, and it's such a fresh perspective, such a really welcoming book too for anybody that's never read any hack slash uh it's got really fun characters really engaging mythology that you can just kind of really go with um but it also has some gruesome situations some really gnarly violence and kills uh some of the most deranged characters you could ever see uh the things that they have to face on a you know every issue uh, are just super fucked up so like this is a whole mixed bag, but I think from what I've seen now and I've researched, it really distills the essence of what Hack Slash is really about. And just when you think that you know how the story is going to end, this book turns not just the story, but your life upside down. Uh, and then not only everyone is an emotional mess by the end. So uh, let's take a look at some of the preview art because uh, not only is Zori Thorgan a fantastic writer, but also, just a great, great artist. Uh, you know, we kind of catch up. I love that these pages, the first few pages, are uh, sans dialogue. I think it just really makes sense for uh, for the story. It makes sense for the book. Uh, and it's just some of the creepiest shit you could ever see, right? Uh, the, the, the mother spirit, the children, uh, the dead children. Oh, my God. Yeah, just so many weird things. Just so fucked up all over. Uh, and then we get to see our favorite characters uh, as they kind of process everything that's going on. We get to see a little bit of how they're dealing with the stress of everything that they just had to face. Uh, and this is just the beginning of the story. This isn't even the end. So very, very cool stuff. Um, I would really love to hear from people that are new to the hack slash, uh, this, the, you know, the hack slash property. Uh, what you thought of this this series? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I think it's just a lot of fun, and this is it. Really feels like something that comic books were just truly made for. Um, but also, if you're a longtime fan of Hack Slash, let me know how you think this fits into the larger world, um, and let me know what you think of just like the final few pages of this book. So, if you have read Hack Slash uh, Back to School, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. We have at the back uh, the main cover, and also at the end of the video, we have a cover by Liana Kangas, who's one of my favorite artists. Hopefully, I can pick that up. I asked my shop to save one for me if they get it. Uh, but sometimes some of these variant covers are not very readily available. Uh, so, as always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.